channel. If you're new here, welcome. So today I'm actually going to be doing something slightly different than what I normally do here on my channel and I'm actually going to be doing a talk through tutorial on turning myself into my Animal Crossing character. Now I don't normally do talk through tutorials just because I am not always the best at multitasking. I will take forever to get through a look if I'm like talking and trying to explain what I'm doing along the way as opposed to just taking multiple takes on a voiceover later on and I actually kind of like the effect of that I think it's a little bit more clean a little bit more professional but today I'm feeling goofy I thought it'd be nice to just kind of take a step back make it a little bit more chill just kind of catch up with you guys let you know like where I've been what I've been doing just things going on in my life especially since quarantine has been happening and just everything going on through the summer so I thought I'd take the opportunity to kind of catch y'all up on all of that and this was kind of the best way to do it while still getting a creative look out there and then also talk about my Animal Crossing Island a little bit just to kind of tell y'all a little bit about it because this is the first time I've ever played Animal Crossing so I thought it'd be fun to kind of just share my thoughts and just have like a little chit chat get ready with me while I turn into the animated version of myself. This is my Animal Crossing New Horizons avatar. I designed her myself to look like myself. But being that it's an animated version, I'm going to be doing a few different things to my face than I would obviously like in a normal makeup tutorial. I want to make it a little bit more fun, obviously look a little bit more animated, so I wanted to kind of film a tutorial on it and just have fun with it. So anyways, if you guys are interested in seeing me turn myself into my Animal Crossing New Horizons avatar, then just keep watching. <laughs> Okay, so first off, I'm going to ask that you please forgive me for this wig. It's a really nice wig. The only issue is it has like these really weird short baby hairs that I've tried to just kind of, you know, hide, cut, get rid of, and it's not quite working, so I kind of look weird, so please forgive me, but I'm actually going to be blocking out my eyebrows, so I kind of need the forehead space to do so. So we're just going to go ahead and get started with that. Actually, I lied. I want to moisturize first. I'm going to be taking my 4th Ray Beauty Watermelon Face Milk. I really like the 4th Ray Beauty Face Milks. They're really nice, really hydrating, but also like super super simple and also not to mention very affordable. That's something I really love about ColourPop and their sister company, 4th Ray Beauty. It's just how affordable and nice their products are. Can't go wrong. Just gonna let that sink in the face real nice. Also, I started drinking LaCroix this summer. I never had a LaCroix before, mostly because I'm not a big fan of sparkling water. Like, just give me tap. That's what I like. But I'm a big fan of fruit-flavored water, and I would drink Hint water all the time. But the issue is uh, they kind of get really expensive, and I can't justify that. So I had LaCroix one day, and uh, I fell in love with it because it's sweet, but there's no sugar or anything like that. So I'm officially that person who likes LaCroix, but right now I'm drinking the pineapple strawberry, and I really like it. My favorite one is the passion fruit. Passion fruit and key lime are just mm, so good. I think I'm gonna wait to prime my face until after I do my brows because since my Animal Crossing character has um, angled brows because I'm too afraid to shave the tail of my brow in real life, so I made my Animal Crossing character have it, I have to now block out the tails of my brows, which I haven't had to do this since like Halloween, so let's see how this goes. So I'm just gonna take my Elmer's glue stick and I'm just going to start gluing the brow hairs up just on the tail of my brow, just kind of pushing these brow hairs upwards. And then I'm just gonna wait a few seconds now, make sure it gets tacky before, I have a spatula and I don't know where I put it, so I'm going to be using the end of this clothespin <laughs> for the time being because it was around me and I didn't feel like getting up. So, I'm gonna wait for it to get tacky a little bit. And then I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling this up making sure it's nice and flat to my face. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to be going into some of my Airspun Translucent Powder. And I'm gonna put that on the edge of a little beauty sponge and then I'm just going to press that into that nice corner. And that is step one out of however many you need to do until it is flat to your face and looks great. So while I continue doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and fill you guys in on like the biggest reason why I haven't been posting videos recently, um, one, obviously, as y'all could see, I was still posting Christmas videos up until like, what, May? Which is obviously not great. Um, that was never the intention. I was supposed to have them up, still bad, but like in March or something like that. And then quarantine happened and the world shut down and everyone from my family came home and I have three siblings and my two parents and then of course my two dogs and our cat. And so because of that, I was really enjoying just everybody being home again because it hasn't been like that in a long time. And so I kind of just ended up like 
switching priorities a little bit. Um, I still had to do work and everything because I design websites and I work for a local fine art gallery. I run their social media and I do all of their paperwork regarding like flyers and advertisements and stuff like that. So I was still very much working from home and so because these are the things that pay me, I had to kind of put YouTube on the back burner a little bit. One, because I was just so creatively drained and two, because the time that I would use do filming YouTube videos and creating characters, I wanted to spend that time with my family and so it's definitely been an interesting year because I've never taken that much time off of YouTube and it felt very weird still posting Christmas videos later on but then I also look at it like you know someone who wants to turn themselves into like Jovi the elf or have like a Santa but on their nose like they can still type up up and find it like five years later and so I was kind of like that's why I still uploaded the videos but I didn't like how late it was honestly and it just felt weird so that was like the beginning part of it and then I was able to kind of get back on a roll and get those videos edited and put back up and then <laughs> the weirdest thing happened starting end of May throughout the entire month of June and finally wrapped itself up like mid-July. I kind of talked about it a little bit on my community page here on YouTube. I like mentioned it. It was just very, very strange and I didn't know what to do. I had gotten a bug bite on my eyelid and of course that was a weird experience. The images that I had posted were in its beginning stages it got much much worse i'm not sure if i'll post pictures here or not but if i do i do if i don't it's because i'm embarrassed because it is just like so strange and so weird but it might end up helping you guys if y'all think you might be having something similar or if you've had something similar happen to you um it was the weirdest thing and it just kept getting infected to the point to where i had a hole in my eyelid and it was freaking me out because the infection was just spreading and I am over here terrified like this is on my face like obviously I couldn't wear makeup I didn't wear makeup for like a whole month this is like the first time I'm really wearing makeup in the past like month and a half so I'm at this we'll see how this goes but it was just a very very strange and unsettling experience because it was in my face it was so close to my eye like what is happening like why is the infection like spreading and getting so big like am I gonna need surgery like what's happening so like everything was just like very unsettling and new and so obviously I couldn't wear makeup and there wasn't much I could do and so I was just like having a hard time keeping myself calm in that situation I guess because the doctors were just like okay it's just you know it's just a mosquito bite or a spider bite or something but it was really bad and so I got on antibiotic for that and then it kind of wrapped itself up and then <laughs> I noticed something very strange uh, uh, one of my pimples started developing the same kind of infection as the spider bite and the pimple was like up here on my face and I was like okay well like I was very careful in making sure I cleaned my brushes I was very careful in making sure I didn't use any of the tools or like try and spread it at all I was being very very careful to not do any of that and so part of me was just thinking like okay maybe I wasn't careful enough like maybe it's just you know, weird acne or something like that. Maybe I'm just starting to get really weird cystic acne as I'm getting older, I don't know. That was weird because once again, that ended up taking like a week to heal. I wasn't on antibiotic for that because I was just thinking it was some random fluke, really weird, but I noticed it was acting the exact same way as the spider bite on my eyelid. And it was just very, very strange. And then it took, I don't know if you guys can see, I have like this little scar in my eyebrow. I had gotten acne there as well. I gotten a pimple and it was infected and it was the same exact thing. And then finally I got one here, which you guys can actually still partly see like the scar and how it's healing and stuff like that. That was starting to turn into a pimple and I'm over here just assuming that it's some kind of weird cystic acne. Like it's strange how it's all tying together, but it has to just be some kind of weird cystic acne. Maybe it's just something I'm gonna have to get used with, used to like for the rest of my life. And then I woke up the next day with my eye pra eyes <laughs> practically swollen shut because this had swollen up into a knot in the middle of the night. I had also started to get something right here, by the way. This had been like the first day it was like developing. It's like made this whole eye swollen. And then this was so swollen, it made this eye swollen, which it's like, that's not normal. So we went to the urgent care. My mom took me because I couldn't drive because I could not see because my eyes were swollen shut. And I saw the doctor again. And the moment she walked in, she's like, oh no, this is not good. And I'm just like, 
having a really hard time because I'm stressed because I know for the career that I want to have, which is YouTube, my face is what you guys see. My face is what we work with. It's the canvas. And so I'm worried that like, what if like I'm having, I don't, I didn't even know what it was, you know, like am I gonna have to have surgery to fix whatever this is? Like I, my mind was going a million different places because I truly just had no idea what was going on. And it was just so strange. And so the doctor ended up coming back in and she's like, my theory is it all stemmed from the bug bite, but essentially I had staff on my eyelid and when the mosquito, they came to the conclusion it was likely a mosquito, when the mosquito bit me, it pushed the staff into my blood and into my face and that is why I started having staph all over my face. So I had a staph infection in my face for about a month and a half and that was just incredibly stressful. But the moment she said that's what it was and she prescribed me an antibiotic ointment and antibi like two different kinds of antibiotics. One I had to take four times a day for 10 days. So it was so many pills and it was just ridiculous. But the moment she told me what it was, I was so happy and relieved because it made sense. The reason my skin was reacting that way made sense. And so I still have a few scars from it, but it is healed. It is gone. I cleaned my makeup brushes so many times to ensure that it was gone, but it's just like, I feel so relieved, but that was a big reason why I was absent for the summer months specifically, because I had a staph infection in my face and it was just so weird. I would have never expected that to happen of all the things I guess that could happen right now, but I'm glad it got taken care of. It was definitely stressful, but I hope that might help you guys. Not trying to tell you that that might be what it is, but like if you guys have happened to get a staph infection in your face, it feels good to know what it is because for the longest time you just have absolutely no idea. And it's just so weird, especially since the infection wasn't even normal infection. Like I'd have to like pull it out. It was just so bizarre and strange. And I just, I'm just happy it's taken care of. Hello, Maddie from the future here. I'm um, just wanted to hop on and make another quick update from the story that I just told. So unfortunately when all of this happened, this was happening end of May to end of July, beginning of August, essentially that I was having to get the antibiotics, you know, figuring out what this was, um, you know, have the antibiotics not work and then go on different antibiotics, have those antibiotics work and all of that stuff. So all of this took about a month to a month and a half. And so with that, um, I thought everything was fine and dandy come August. I was wrong. Um, it was about beginning mid August and all of a sudden I started getting this beautiful little pimple on my cheek and um next day immediately it started swelling up and so i went to the dermatologist i was thankfully able to get in that day because they knew how urgent it was being with my history of having the staph infection in my face and he put me on the exact same antibiotic that i was just on we gave it about 48 hours and my face was only getting more and more swollen. And I know sometimes, you know, like maybe the swelling just has to happen and then it will get better, but it's like nothing was happening. Nothing was working, nothing was effective. My face was getting worse. And so I called him back and he had me send him some photos and <laughs> he called me and said that I needed to go to the hospital and get IV fluids in me to try and help this because it was so bad. And I was alarmed. So we called my urgent care. Unfortunately, they didn't do that there. So I was gonna have to go to the hospital. So thankfully, one of our old neighbors and a close friend of our families is a doctor um, at a nearby hospital to us, like literally about like 20 minutes away. So we gave him a call and I'm stressing out of my mind. <laughs> you can just know this, I am stressing out of my mind. And he is so lovely and was immediately gonna see me and everything with COVID. I was potentially gonna have to stay overnight because he's like, unfortunately, I don't think one IV is gonna help. You'd have to do about two IVs, uh, which I would be then be there overnight. And so that was scary. I've never had to be overnight at a hospital before, you know, thankfully, but so this was just a scary situation. So he's like, what you can do is you can once again, ride it out, see if these antibiotics are gonna do anything better for you or, you know, come to the hospital. And so for me, already seeing how much time is just going by since the like middle of May to now middle of August, I am just so stressed and just so ready for this to be gone. This has been happening for at least two months now. 
And so finally, I my mom and I talked about it and we just decided to just go because honestly, it's like, you know, I would rather get this over with, like just fix it. Like I'm just ready for it to be over with. So my mom and I went to the hospital. We grabbed some Taco Bell before to like eat up and have like a little snack. We get to the hospital. Um, I brought my laptop in case like I could edit the footage, like this footage and other stuff um, while I was there because this had just been filmed and then I didn't have this issue. <laughs> so we did that um, and we get there and immediately three doctors come in and they're asking me questions and he's one of them and just asking me about my antibiotics and I bring out my whole bag of antibiotics. I'd just been re-prescribed essentially. And we start discussing it. And essentially, we found an issue. One, it was strange because one of the medications that had just been refilled for me was not nearly as much as I'd had the first time. And it was like a doxycycline, I believe. And he was just astounded. He's like, this isn't going to do anything because I didn't have nearly as enough of a dose as I should have. And so I don't know if that was an issue on the pharmacy, on my dermatologist. It was just very strange. But regardless, I wasn't getting enough of something. And then also, he's like, here's the issue. You are now having staff more than once. He's like, when they cultured it, what did they say it was? And I'm like, when they what? And he's like, when they swabbed it, what did they say it was? Like, what was it resistant to? And I'm like, no one swabbed it. And he's like, no one swabbed it? And like, keep in mind, I've been to the doctor like at least like four or five times at this point, whether it's a dermatologist or doctor for these issues and no one had swabbed it. And so he's like, okay, well, regardless, we're doing that. And so we looked at my antibiotics. There was the issue with not having enough of a dosage. And he's like, this is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid you could have the really bad staff, AKA MRSA. Um, which is staff that is resistant to certain antibiotics. And he wanted to swab my pus, all the fun stuff, to see if it was resistant. And essentially, they were going to figure out if like these antibiotics were even working. And he was questioning, why are you on these antibiotics? Like, why are these the ones that you are having to take? Why do they prescribe you these? And my mom... When I was a baby, apparently I had an allergic reaction to like sulfa. Like I started like breaking out in a rash all over my body. So from then I wasn't having any antibiotics with sulfa in it. And my doctor looked at me and he's like, unfortunately, you're probably going to have to be on medication with sulfa because that is the only thing that really like goes against like potentially like the really aggressive staff. Like what you have like helps like the symptoms, but it doesn't like get rid of it altogether. So... We took the risk and I went ahead and got on the medication because I'm like, you know, what's the worst that happens? I break out in a rash. Maybe I stop breathing. I don't know. I'm kidding. But like, you know, I was I'm like ready to risk it. I'm like, listen, I know the hospital's 20 minutes away. I'll zoom over there if I need to. But I decided to get on it. Uh, those new antibiotics and I didn't stay overnight because he's like, I want to try and just switch you over to antibiotics because like these IVs are really hard on your kidneys. We don't want to do this unless like it is like the last minute, like these antibiotics aren't working. So we went and got the new prescriptions and already it just like started to clear up. The only thing is like there was like this was so swollen and infected. It took like three weeks easy. Like there's still a scar. There's still a mark there with the others. It's kind of like the scarring, like after like the pus and like swelling is gone, the scarring went away about like after a week, a week and a half. This has been like still going away, like to the point to where like the scab just fell off this past weekend and I'm filming this little section, Friday, September 25th. So I wasn't even able to film until like this week. So just so you know, Halloween videos are coming. I don't even really talk about that in this video because this video was filmed once again, end of July. I thought I had time. Um, Halloween videos are coming and I'm just really getting things together, getting things filmed because now that this is gone, it's like, it's go time. I've been working on some DIYs. That is a little sneak peek, if you can guess what that's for. That's fantastic. Um, I also have other sneak peeks on my Patreon, if you guys want to check that out. But just want to fill y'all in, because essentially, the other reason I was gone that wasn't talked about in this video, because this video was filmed after the first event, was I ended up getting it again and found out that it was the bad staff. And I didn't, like, quite clarify that. When the, like, culture came back, it's bad staff. So... It was MRSA. So I had to get definitely be on like the, those antibiotics for that. And so it's just been a process. It's been stressful. I don't want to say anything, but like fingers crossed that this is taken care of because if this happens in October, I'm done for. So just keep me in your thoughts and prayers because I'm just, I'm trying my best here, but I appreciate all of you being here with me 
through it to support me. It's been stressful, but I've been trying to get other things done. Like I said, I've been working on some DIYs, things that don't require filming or that take too much energy out of me because with the antibiotics, I was like practically dead. I like only had like maybe two hours of productivity and then I was gone for. So anyway, I know I talk way too much. I'm sorry, we'll get back onto the video where I continue talking too much. But anyways, I hope you enjoy. I do talk about Animal Crossing in this, I promise. Feel free to skip through you know, have a snack, use this almost as like a podcast because that's kind of what it's become at this point. But anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> so next I'm going to be taking my Buckle Bunny Beauty Sheer Perfection Primer and I'm just going to be applying that all over my face. If you guys are looking for a primer, I highly recommend this or the Buckle Bunny Beauty Fringe Benefit Primer. Those two, are, they're just my absolute favorite primers at the moment. They are so fantastic. I basically use them in every single video. And so I'm just going to be applying this all over my face before we move on to the fun stuff, which is likely gonna be completing the eyebrows before we do foundation and whatnot. Um, but if you guys are interested in trying this out, um, I actually do have a code with them now, which is so exciting. Um, their company is actually one of the ones that I helped revamp the website for and everything, which is like super exciting that I got to like help with that. But regardless, I have a coupon code for 10% off if you guys are interested in trying any of the Buckle Bunny Beauty products. Um, that would actually really help me if you wanted to use my code or try them out. It's up to you, but my code is Madeline10. So I'm really excited because it's like the first uh, co affiliate code, I guess, that I have. So. Uh, I'm super excited about it. So check it out if you want. It'd be, it'd be really fun. <laughs> okay, so next I'm actually just going to be covering the tail of my brow with some concealer, just so we can kind of help block that out a bit. And this is a step that you can also build up as well. So I'm just going to be putting concealer on this. And then I'm just going to be setting it with my air spun translucent powder again. I know we're kind of jumping around with this tutorial, but honestly, what's new? Uh, that is typically how I film. Um, so now I'm actually going to be moving on to foundation. I'm trying the new ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation. Obviously with everything going on with COVID right now, um, you really do have to kind of guess like your color because with my Pretty Fresh uh, tinted moisturizer, I am light 7W, so I was really just trying to guesstimate like what color I am. So I'm actually going to be trying the color light 55N. So let's see if it works. If it ends up not working, I'll use a different one, but I'm hoping that this works. Okay, I will say consistency wise, this is so nice. This is absolutely amazing. I love the formula of this. Oh my goodness. It really does just like go on like I wanna say like butter, but I don't recall needing to put butter on my face, but it just goes on so smoothly. Like I really, really like this. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to be moving on to brows and I'm going to be taking my Buckle Bunny Beauty Brow Wow Pomade in Loretta and I'm just going to be taking my little angled Anastasia brush with the spoolie. Just dipping that in there and then I'm just going to start to sculpt out the shape that I want. I'm basically going to really be pulling this out into like a diagonal. Um, obviously my brows might not end up being as pointy as they are for Animal Crossing, but it's gonna be pretty close, so I'll try my best. It'll do. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm like completely happy with it. I feel like I look like I have like little longhorn horns, but I mean, it's pretty close. I know, what, 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 we're just gonna keep going. It's too late to go back now. <laughs> Okay, I, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> we'll see, maybe, I mean, it probably looks crazy now, but maybe with the rest of the makeup, who knows. But I am gonna like sculpt it out a little bit more just to kind of help it out some. Okay, so next we're going to be moving on to eyes. So while I do that, I'm going to be taking my Smashbox 24 hour photo finish primer and just going ahead and priming my eyelids to prep them for eyeshadow. Okay, that was creepy. So for my eyes, I'm going to be going into my Be Perfect Carnival XL Pro Palette, and I'm going to start off, let's start off, I haven't used this yet. So I'm going to start off by taking Pillow Talk, which is like a nice like white ivory color, and I'm just going to be applying that right all over the lid. Basically just taking a little fluffy brush and just putting it everywhere, just to kind of help set this color and also help brighten up the eye a little bit as well and then just kind of blend it out so i figured we might as well start talking about animal crossing because you know what is this whole video about anyway and so first off i thought i would introduce my villager avatar and the name of my island so i named my avatar after myself madeline 
so that's exciting. And then I named my island Valaris, which is named after the city of Starlight from A Court of Thorns and Roses because I'm absolutely obsessed with Sarah J Maas's books. They're absolutely amazing. And so I was trying, I was having a really hard time thinking of an island name. Up until I found out that there was like a 10 character limit, I was going to name it Destiny Island from Kingdom Hearts. And then of course it didn't fit. And so I took about an hour trying to figure out um, the name for my island. And then I was like, oh my gosh, Valaris. Like that is so beautiful and I love that book so much. So I named my book after the city of Starlight. And going into it, I wanted the whole island to be like Starlight themed, like night court, very reminiscent of like a night city and everything. And then I quickly realized that that's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna make it an island that I'm happy with. <laughs> and how far have I gotten in terraforming and designing my island? Um, not far at all. You'd think after spending a decent amount of time playing Animal Crossing during quarantine, which I was doing basically every day since the beginning of April to mid-May, um, that I would get decently far and I of course have not. I kind of got the idea of what I wanted and then I just, I, I, I as I'm filming this, it is the end of July. It is July 24th the day I'm filming this and I haven't played Animal Crossing since before I got staff in my face Which is odd because you'd think with staff in my face I'd play Animal Crossing, but I didn't I just started like brainstorming like looks I wanted to do and kind of figured out some stuff for Halloween So it's interesting Like what did I, what did I do? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> so next I'm going to be going into fade on the fluffy brush and I'm just going to be applying that to the outer corner of my crease. We're really just making this like a nice neutral eye look, like nothing too crazy. Um, just kind of going in and I'm kind of just doing what I think looks good at this point, which is honestly a lot of my looks. Just like, unless I have a blueprint of recreating a character in particular, I'm really just winging it when it comes to the eyes especially and just kind of either doing what I know or doing what I'm assuming is gonna hopefully look good at the end of it. Okay, so next I'm going to be going into makeup, which is like a mauve purplish color, and I'm just going to be putting that on to the outer corner of the crease as well, and then just slightly blending it inwards a bit, but we're really just keeping it to this outer corner. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm going to be going into Pink Me, which is like a little nice highlight color. It's got like a few pink reflex in it. I'm just going to be highlighting my brow bone using this and then just lightly blending it down. Okay, so next I'm going to be going into basic, which is like a light brownish mahogany color, and once again, building that up on the outer corner of my crease. Now I'm going to be taking a pencil brush. This is the Morphe E18, and I'm just going to be bringing down that color to my lower waterline as well. Waterline? Lash line, oh my goodness. See, this is why I don't usually do this. I'm also just darkening it up a little bit with intuition. And I'm gonna go through it and just blend that out a bit. Now, I personally don't see any eye highlight colors like for my lid that I want, so I'm actually going to be going back into my ColourPop It's a Princess Thing palette. This is my favorite. I literally go into this palette the absolute most. And as you can see, there's none left of my lid shade color, which is Ray. It's this like beautiful champagne gold color. And so I'm actually gonna be taking what I can of that and just patting that on to the center of my lid and then blending that into the inner corner a little bit as well. Then I'm going to be going into one kiss and just applying that in the very center of the lid. This is like a nice gold color. So I'm just gonna be doing that to kind of help transition the colors a little bit. And then once again, because I'm a mess, I'm just going in and cleaning this up. So I'm actually gonna take a break from my eyes and move on to my face again. I'm going to be taking my Bucca Bunny Beauty Cream to Powder Foundation in Mocha. I love to use this for cream contour. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my little cream contour brush, which I actually just use this Bare Essentials Max Coverage Concealer Brush, and I use it to apply my little cream contour. And I actually think that this is, I can't remember, is Bare Essentials part of Bare Minerals? Cause I feel like it is. I feel like it's like their brush collection or something, but I don't know why I'm thinking that they're separate things. But regardless, I'm gonna use this to go ahead and contour my face. So I'm going to be applying it to the areas that I want to help sculpt and give me more shape and shadow. So now I'm going to go ahead and just blend this out using my Morphe R13 or R1S. One of those, do with that information what you will. I'm just gonna go ahead and start to blend this out. 
So the next question that I'm going to talk about regarding Animal Crossing is what is my native flower and fruit? So going into Animal Crossing, I heard so many bad things about pears because like you couldn't see them on the trees or something like that. And so going into it, I really, 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 really wanting my native fruit to be cherries because I thought that they just looked super cute and that they were super precious and I'm like, that's what I want my native fruit to be. It was my favorite option out of all of them. Well, lo and behold, I arrive on my island and I have none other than the pear. So for a split second, I was kind of disappointed and then I was like, why are people complaining about pears? You can see them perfectly fine. And honestly, I love pears as an individual, as a human being. I think that they taste so good. And so I was just like, wait a minute, I actually really love this. So I love having pears on my island personally. I mean, granted now I have like all of them planted and I'm just, you know, whatever, enjoying my baskets of fruit, but I really love <laughs> that my native fruit is a pear. I don't know. And especially since both of my friends who play Animal Crossing, it's really fun. One of them lives in Austin and the other lives here in San Antonio, but of course we've all been quarantining. So something that we would do during quarantine is we'd have like little 4 a.m. Animal Crossing date nights and we would all like hang out, get some snacks and play together and then just like really catch up and like spend time together. And we would stay up so late and it was so much fun and I absolutely loved it. But both of them have cherries as their native fruit. So it was really great because I would just go over to the island and I'd make so much money because I had pears. So next I'm going to be going into my Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer in C2.5 and just applying this to the areas of my face that I want to go ahead and highlight. So that being my native fruit, my native flower is the pansy, which honestly, I personally don't really care what my native flower is. It doesn't really make like a difference to me. Um, I'm having the hardest time crossbreeding all of my flowers to try and get hybrids. Um, I think I'm just gonna end up taking some from my friend and then just <laughs> making my own at that point, just like rebreeding the crossbreeds because it is a long process. And I also don't care that much to have all the different breeds. Um, I do have a five star island, which is really fun. But at the same time, does it look like a five star island? No. <laughs> okay, so I let this sit on my face a little bit uh, as I learned by the wonderful Jackie Ina. It kind of just helps keep the color a little bit more opaque. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start to blend it out. See, like who does he think he is? What is that? Can I help you, sir? Are you paying rent here? What do you? Oh my God, there's more of them. <laughs> so next we're going to be moving on to contour and I'm going to be taking my KVD Beauty Shade and Light Palette. And I'm also going to be taking my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer and I'm just going to be applying those to my face while I talk about my favorite villagers. So my all time favorite villager who I never would have expected because I got him on my island randomly from Tom Nook, like whenever Tom Nook assigns you three villagers. And so <laughs> the first one who I would literally die for in the animated world is Jeremiah. He's this little precious frog and I am absolutely in love with him. He is the kind that you never would have expected, but then you would do absolutely anything for it. He is a little angel. He, I think he has the um, snooty personality or something like that, or lazy, one of those, but he is just so much fun. He thinks he's a superhero. He's so kind and I just, I miss him so much. It's been a long time since I've seen him. So I actually need to get on, make sure he's doing okay. I know I missed so many birthdays in these past two months and I'm gonna have to do some repenting. I glued this brow down so bad, but we're not gonna talk about it because it's gonna get hidden with the beanie that I'm gonna wear. So, yep, <laughs> it's a good time, it's a great time. So my other favorite villager is a girl and her name is Sherry and she's like this tiny pink bear She's a cub, technically, and she's so stinking cute. She's a, what is it, like preppy pop star. She's a pop star type Animal Crossing character, and she's so stinking fun. I literally adore her. She just keeps things lighthearted. I always buy so many clothes for my characters because I love dressing them up, which is the exact kind of mother I'm gonna be one day, is just buying so many clothes to dress up my children. And so in this sense, my Animal Crossing characters my villagers are my children and I am dressing them up to the fullest extent. Like Jeremiah, I buy him superhero costumes and he just runs around playing in the flowers and I am just the happiest person ever because he's just living his best life. So how could I not live my best life watching him live his best life? I'm also all over the place and this is also why I say like I don't typically do videos like this because I need to like be able to focus when I'm doing the makeup on myself because I forgot to set my face. Woohoo! So I'm just gonna do that right now. 
something that I had to do on my island for the first time, and the only time, which is nice, is I had to banish a villager. Because this was before I realized that whenever like you place a plot of land, you have to fill that with a villager within like that day, otherwise Tom Nook will fill it for you. And so I was really tired one night and I was just like, oh, I'll continue my search in the morning. And I woke up and all of a sudden it said, sold. Harry lives here. I'm like, who's Harry? So I pull up my little phone and I look up Harry, Animal Crossing villager, and I am astounded by what I see. There's a donkey with facial hair. And I was not pleased. He just was so wrong in so many ways. He did not fit the rest of my villager's aesthetic. And I was just like, okay, well, you know, we'll be welcoming. We'll see how he fits in. And he immediately starts fighting with all of my villagers. And I'm over here like, you're talking crap to Jeremiah. I will kill you because Jeremiah is a little angel and he's doing nothing wrong. He's chasing butterflies. Like, can I help you, sir? So I banished him the moment he had that thought bubble. I kicked him out. I'm like, go enjoy your life. We don't need you here anymore. Thank you for contributing what you contributed. Peace be with you. What about you guys? Have you guys had to banish a villager yet? Like, who have you banished? Who is your least favorite villager? Because I can confidently say he's probably right up there. I'm just not a fan of him. He just was, he had so much attitude and he just was not enjoying the island of Alaris. And I'm like, sir, you can you can see your way out of here. You can just pay monthly rent and then go. You know, I, I, I'm not even gonna hold you to a lease. Okay, so next I'm going to be doing like the little blush that the Animal Crossing villager has right up here. It's very similar to what I did for Isabel. So I'm going to be going in with just like this little synthetic brush on it to my Smashbox blendable lip and cheek color. And this is in the color Laurel Canyon Coral. Okay, and I'm just gonna be going ahead and pressing this in where I want that to be. Cause I wanna see if this technique works. I haven't tried this yet, like putting a cream. I don't, I know you're not usually supposed to put creams on top of powders, but I really wanna see how this lays. And then of course I'm gonna be going over this with a little bit of eyeshadow too, but kind of just like using this as a base to kind of get maybe like a realistic look to it without it being too painted. Cause with Isabel, I wanted it to be that kind of look, but with this, I wanna see if I can really kind of make it look a little bit natural. And then of course, just like set it with some eyeshadow, but I mean, I'm kind of liking how that's looking so far. But do I also look like I just got punched in the face or like slapped or something by Harry? I mean, I'm not mad about it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this on the other cheek as well. And while I do this, um, my first two villagers that I got on my island were Renee and Coach. And I love both of them so much. The only villager that I have like let leave my island is Harry because I love all of my other villagers so much and I do have 10. And so the villagers that I have, I have Sherry, Jeremiah, Coach, Renee, Fauna, Tia, Kid, Daisy, Graham, and Portia. And so I am obviously still like looking or like looking for my, like my dreamy, which I wanna know what is your dreamy animal. And so for those of you who don't play Animal Crossing, a dreamy is basically like your dream Animal Crossing uh, characters and so I'm so happy with all of the ones that I have the only characters I could really see myself let leave if they were to ask so I can further find my dreamy is I'd be okay maybe if Portia left I'm really enjoying her company at the moment just because she has such a mature atmosphere to her so I do really like her and then also maybe kid he's really fun and I like having him around too but at some point I will be okay with them if they were to ask to leave I think but for a while, I'm actually really okay with who I have. Now, however, with that being said, my dreamy that I would actually really love to find, um, there's so many really sweet ones. So I think, you know, like Daisy I came across, she wasn't a dreamy by any means, but I absolutely fell in love with her when I saw her because she was just so precious and so sweet. And so I kind of feel like that's gonna be like the same thing whenever I find like another one. But the one that I would definitely be on the hunt to find that I'm absolutely in love with is Lucky. And he's the one that's like a mummy dog. He is so precious and I love him so much. So he's one that I would definitely like go on a hunt to find because I'm absolutely obsessed with him. While I'm at it, I'm also going to be taking some of this blush and applying it to my nose since my Animal Crossing villager obviously has a lot of blush on the nose as well. It's kind of like a little red nose a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start to build that up with this right here. 
before moving on to taking some eyeshadow, but this is kind of like a good way to like start it off, I think. So next I'm going to be going back into my Carnival palette, and I think I'm gonna be taking Lit and Inferno and mixing them together, maybe going into Boy Bye, we shall see. But I'm gonna start off with these two to kind of use as like the blush, but also like the tip of the nose. So I'm gonna start off by just like gently patting this on here because these shadows are very pigmented, which I'm so in love with. But I don't wanna do too much, so I'm just gonna kind of like lightly blend it and then we can always like build it up even more. I'm honestly just turning myself into Rudolph. <laughs> you thought we were done with the Christmas looks, you're wrong. <laughs> so this one I'm actually taking a little bit of shuffle too and I'm just lightly applying this, mostly around the perimeter of this blush, just cause I don't wanna go too heavy and I kind of want to mostly just like still enhance it, but I don't want it to be too much. And I'm just gonna blend some of it out with my finger too, I think. This is really cute. Okay, it's actually coming together. You know, we had that moment with the brows where I lost faith. I really did, y'all. But now it's actually looking pretty cute. Okay. And we haven't even done the lashes yet. And I feel like the lashes are what always pulls something together. Lashes and lips. It just, it's fantastic. So now that that's done, I'm going to be going into my BH Cosmetics Spotlight Highlight Palette. And I'm just going to be taking a mixture of all of them. I'm just going to be highlighting my face. Okay, so right before we move on to the rest of the eyes, which is just gonna be lashes and then lips, honestly, we're pretty much done with this. I wanted to show you guys my switch. I actually remembered, this is actually something I spent some time doing um, during quarantine, whenever I wasn't playing Animal Crossing, is I wanted to personalize my switch, because I never had a switch before Animal Crossing. I got the switch to play Animal Crossing, and my little brother was actually about to sell his online, because he got it like two years ago, and then he never really played it, and so he was gonna sell it, so we kind of made a deal and I bought it from him. But I decided to personalize it like with this really pretty lilac case. And I love this so much. It was so much fun to do. It was very intensive. I did have to buy my own like special set of screwdrivers to do this just because the screwdrivers I had worked, but they started to strip one in particular. And so it had like its ups and downs, of course, but it was actually a lot easier to do. Like once you get like these main screws off, like going through the internal part is very easy because like you just watch the tutorial and it's easy to follow along with. But I love this so, so much. So of course, like I'm gonna leave the link down below to like the case that I got. Um, any case from this brand is really, really nice. Um, but I just love it so much. It's so, so fun. I'm just, I don't know. It's nice to have like a personalized one and I didn't want to do a skin because the skins never quite lay on it the way I would want and this is just like it's really nice it kind of has like a little bit of like a soft feeling to it I don't know if like suede would be the one like the word I would use to describe it but it feels really nice so I'm really happy about it so I don't know I just wanted to like point that out because it was really fun to do during quarantine and just like spend some time doing this so I really really liked it okay back to the makeup so I actually am going to be doing a tiny bit of eyeliner you don't see any like on the character but I do want to do like just a tiny bit just to kind of help elongate my eyes a little bit so I'm actually going to be going into my Buckle Bunny Beauty Loretta Brow Pomade and then using the angled brush, I'm actually going to be using this as the like little eyeliner color because I wanted something darker than my brown eyeliner but not black. So I'm just gonna be using this because it's the perfect in between. Okay, so the next step I'm going to be doing my mascara but while I'm doing that, I'm going to be actually taking some of these flirty lashes from Kiss and I'm going to be cutting them in half. I'm only going to be applying the outer corner of the lash to my eyes just because the way that I have my character set up is she just has like the little lashes but they're only at the like outer corner so I thought that that'd be kind of fun to do so I'm actually gonna go ahead and get started on that. <laughs> So we're just about done. We basically only have lips to worry about left. But I'm gonna go ahead and set my face with my Fourth Way Beauty Glisten Up Mist. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. And we're gonna let that dry. So for my lips, I'm actually going to be using this new Korean Beauty lip product. I don't know if it's new for everybody, but it's new to me because I have been using it like this past week to make sure that I like it before I promote it. And I have fallen in love with this product. It is so cool. It is the Korean Beauty product ROM and, and I'm going to be using the Glasting Water Tints 
in the number eight Rose Stream and number seven Pink Valley. And it just gives such a beautiful effect to the lips. And y'all are gonna see what it looks like whenever I put it on. But if you just like look up any Glassing Water Tint review, all of the reviews are so beautiful. And so I'm definitely really excited for you guys to see how this looks. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and outline my lips with my lip liner. Now granted, the Animal Crossing character doesn't really have like lips. So I'm kind of taking a creative liberty here to kind of do my own take on it. So I just applied Rose Stream to the center of my lips. I'm gonna let that dry a tiny bit before going with Pink Valley and kind of doing the same thing because I really kind of want to create a light ombre effect over my lips. So now that that's all my lips, I'm going to be going in with the gloss top coat and this is the Glasting Water Gloss in number one San Ho Crush. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this all over my lips. The applicator for this one is really cool because it's literally just a silicone paddle which is really, really neat and I really like it. I also have a discount code for these products as well and I will have that link down below. Um, it is Madeline 10 as well. I'm gonna try in the future to always have my codes be Madeline 10 if I can. If they're not taken, I will, have to, I will try and have them always be Madeline 10 because that would just be easy to remember. So this is the completed makeup look. I'm just gonna quickly put on the rest of my costume and I'll see you guys in just a sec. And this is my completed Animal Crossing character transformation makeup look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see you next. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos because I have plenty fun ones coming up. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me what your favorite Animal Crossing villager is because I might just be on the hunt and make them my new dreamy because I'm interested because there's just so many to choose from and I just, there's, not enough time. With all that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.